Pedophilia atheist and pseudoskeptics the lifelong dedication of pseudoskeptics to irrationally attacking religious and spiritual institutions and ESP is so gross and organized and widespread and so robotically repeated by thousands in lockstep that one suspects it's some kind of undiagnosed illness or orchestrated or both. Website Subversive Thinking has put some effort into researching this and come up with some surprising connections between ardent atheism in its various forms and a publishing empire called Prometheus Books that has the same founder as CISCOP the peak organization for irrational skepticism and atheism. James Randi, Richard Wiseman, Michael Shermer etc. Just the first few paragraphs are presented here about the type of material coming out of the Prometheus publishing empire. It will explain the pseudoskeptic pathology as having an alarming dimension. With links, you can check yourself. Prometheus books and the pseudoskeptical perversions and other insane and frightening possible consequences of metaphysical naturalism and materialism, militant atheism, Prometheus Books is the leading publisher of pseudoskeptical, materialist, secular humanist and atheist books in U.S. According to Wikipedia Prometheus Books is a publishing company founded in August 1969 by Paul Kurtz, who also founded the Council for Secular Humanism and Co. Founded Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. He is currently the chairman of all three organizations. Prometheus Books publishes a range of books, including many about science, especially those of a skeptical nature. Note that Prometheus Books was founded by Paul Kurtz, the atheist and materialist philosopher founder of the pseudo-skeptical organization CSI COP Link, now called CSI. Well, if you enter the website of Prometheus Books, link, and see the section on human sexuality you'll see titles explicitly or implicitly endorsing, promoting, and justifying, with pseudo-scientific and rationalistic jargon, pornography, prostitution, pedophilia, sadiomasochism, zoophilia, and other sexual aberrations and perversions. In other sections you'll see titles supporting abortion and infanticide, or weird behaviors, like transvestism. The original human sexuality section of Prometheus Books catalog was edited by CSICOP slash CSI Fellow and International Academy of Humanism Secretariat Dr. Vern Bulow, who according to Wikipedia was a member of the editorial board of Paetica, the journal of pedophilia link the pseudo-scientific and immoral journal, Paetica, was a pro-pedophilia journal. According to Wikipedia Link Paetica, the Journal of Pedophilia, 1987-1995, was a journal published by the Sticking Paetica Foundation. Articles drawn from it are available from a number of pro-pedophile activist link websites. Its editor was Joseph Girasi, and the editorial board included articles by writers Fritz Bernhardt, Link Edward Brongers Molling Prof. Vernel Bulo Link and D.H. Donald, Mater, some of whom campaigned as pro-pedophile activists in this website link Bulo is mentioned as someone who accepts the conclusions of Wilson and Cox, 1983, that people with pedophilic feelings are quite normal people who should not be demonized. Some behavior might be socially incorrect, but that is not the same as pathological. As long as these people limit themselves to have fantasies, nothing is wrong. If some people have to change their behavior, this is a case of re-educating those people, not of treatment or curing an illness. People with pedophilic feelings are quite normal people. Would you swallow such nonsense? According to Wikipedia, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders Link, DSM, pedophilia is specified as a form of paraphilia in which a person either has acted on intense sexual urges towards children or experiences recurrent sexual urges towards and fantasies about children that cause distress or interpersonal difficulty for link the disorder is frequently a feature of persons who commit child sexual abuse link 5 hyperlink 6 hyperlink numerous references at source web page however some offenders do not meet the clinical diagnosis standards for pedophilia 8 link in strictly behavioral contexts the word pedophilia can also be applied to the act of child sexual abuse itself, 
also called pedophilic behavior. Pedophiles are not great normal people. They suffer of a mental disorder, and their behavior may be potentially destructive to children. Their use of euphemisms is a well-known tactic to defend censorable doctrines and beliefs. According to this article linked by D.R. Judith Reisman, commenting on World Pornography Conference, the conference featured Patica, the Journal of Pedophilia editor Vern Bulow, and his pedophile editorial colleagues, John DeCecco, Daniel Tsang, and Wayne Dines, all professors at major American colleges. Point three chairing the CSUN erotic section on child pornography was Harris Merkin, an associate. Professor of Political Science at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Merkin's 1999 article, The Pattern of Sexual Politics, Feminism, Homosexuality, and Pedophilia Journal of Homosexuality, Volume 37, describes the steps pedophiles need to take to gain social acceptance. He advises pedophiles to advocate for the elimination of words, like child molestation and child abuse. Why was a so-called secular humanist Professor Bulo, professional atheist, a member of the editorial board of a pro-pedophilia journal, like Patica? Why does the skeptical atheist stand materialist publishing house, Prometheus Books, endorse this kind of behavior with its books? Is that part of the materialist? and metaphysical naturalist agenda to destroy the values of society. I'll attempt to respond some of these questions later. Keep in mind that Prometheus books publish other titles about different topics, including philosophy and science, and I don't doubt some of these titles have some value, but it doesn't justify the promoting of sexual aberrations like pedophilia. Also, perversions and aberrations can be seen in religious people too. But again, it doesn't justify some naturalist aberrations and perversions. Moreover, hardly you'll see any Christian or Jews or other current religious organization promoting these practices as done by Prometheus Books. For the moment, let's see some titles of this skeptical and humanist publishing organization, S. and M. Studies in Dominance and Submission, by Thomas S. Weinberg, A. Youth and Babylon, Confessions, of a Trash Film King, by David Friedman and Don Denevy. The X-Rated Video Tape Guides, Volumes 1-8, by Robert A. Trimmer, The X-Rated Video Tape Star and X, Volumes 1-3, by Patrick Riley, Rod Allen, The Adult Film Industry as Seen, by its most popular male star, by Jerry Butler, The Horseman, Obsessions, of a Zoophile, by Mark Matthews. Introduction by Vern Bulow, the above-mentioned editorial member of Payday Cop, Children's Sexual Encounters with Adults, a Scientific Study, by C. Cayley, D.J. West, and T.P. Woodhouse, Dirty Talk, Diary, of a Phone Sex Mistress, by Gary Anthony and Rocky Bennett, with Sand Kisses, Parting the Leather Curtain, by Mistress Jack Wallen, The Q Letters, True Stories of Sadomasochism, by Sir John A. Commentary on Transvestism, Not a Sexual Perversion, but another possible example of the hidden agenda, and the irrationality and immorality of secular humanism, and its leading publishing house. Among some of the weird titles of the books edited by the rationalist, and scientific Prometheus books, you can't see a book entitled Transvestites, The Erotic Drive to Cross-Dress Link by Magnus Hirschfeld. This book tries to make the case for transvestism as a natural extension of the infinite variations of human personality but, who's its author? According to Wikipedia Dilling, Magnus Hirschfeld was a gay German Jewish physician, sex researcher, and a league gay rights advocate around 1900. Hirschfeld developed the theory of the third, intermediate sex between men and women. He was interested in the study of a wide variety of sexual and erotic urges, at a time when the early taxonomy of sexual identity labels was still being formed. His scientific work extended that of Carl Heinrich Ulrichs, and influenced Havelock Ellis and Edward Carpenter and intermediate sex between men and women. What the hell is that? Not surprisingly, rationalistic scientific and secular humanist Prometheus Books has edited two books linked by Hirschfeld. Interesting, isn't it? In his book on Uri Geller, journalist Jonathan Margolis wrote link one book on Prometheus's list is a British academic text on child abuse. Children's sexual encounters with adults, 
republished in the States, with a bright red jacket on which the title is printed in bold black letters three quarters of an inch high, for the benefit, presumably, of short-sighted researchers into child sex. The book consists of hundreds of pages of detailed case histories of adults having sex with children. Other Prometheus texts have little claim to being academic. Cannibalism, from sacrifice to survival, the horseman, obsessions, of a zoophile person with a sexual attraction to animals with, and kisses, parting the leather curtain, by Mistress Jack Wallen, the breathless orgasm, a love map biography of asphyxiophilia, death dealer, the memoirs, of the SS Kommandant at Auschwitz, how can we explain the above titles? Remember that metaphysical naturalists, secular humanists, and materialistic atheists, militant atheists, don't believe in objective values, bear in mind this point, because it's absolutely essential to understand the psychological and ideological motivation behind such titles. They have a purely negative philosophy, i.e. a philosophy based on the negation of traditional religion, and its values. If they're consistent, they have to embrace relativism and subjectivism in moral topics. According to Richard Dawkins' link now, if you then ask me where I get my ought statements from, that's a more difficult question. If I say something is wrong, like killing people, I don't find that nearly such a defensible statement as I am a distant cousin of an orangutan if it's true, then pornography, pedophilia, infanticide, sadomasochism, rape, zoophilia, suicide, drugs, and killing people are not intrinsically bad or wrong. In fact, Dawkins conceded the latter, when, complimenting the above quote, he said, the second of those statements is true, I can tell you, why it's true, I can bore you to death telling you, why it's true. It's definitely true. The statement, killing people is wrong, to me, is not of that character. I would be quite open to persuasion, that killing people is right in some circumstances it could be argued that in cases of self-defense, selective killing is justified. But remember, that Dawkins 1, has an objective standards of value, and 2, he is not specifically referring to self-defense, so his killing people is right under certain circumstances idea is an open and in specific statement, fully consistent with the metaphysical naturalist, and secular humanist belief. That human life is not an absolute value, and therefore, killing people is not intrinsically bad. For them, there is not such thing as an absolute value in their universe. In fact, according to Dawkins, our universe has a lack, at the bottom, of any properties, like the good, or the evil their universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is. At bottom, no design, no purpose, no evil land, no good, nothing but blind pitiless and different river out of Eden, page 155, as said, if the universe lack of moral properties and values, then any moral value is objectively non-existent, because it is not part of the universe. And any concept of value is, necessarily, an arbitrary idea posed by the human mind, which, according to materialists, is an illusion, because the mind doesn't exist as such, it's only a name for some cerebral processes. Also, Dawkins' documentary title The Root of All Evil loses any moral and logical meaning. And its use is sheer rhetoric, since according to Dawkins evil doesn't exist as part of the universe, yet he states, evil religious beliefs are part of this universe, right? Thus, how could religion be evil in an universe, where evil doesn't exist? Dawkins doesn't seem to be interested in logical consistency and rationality, actually, Dawkins has conceded that morality is relative, science has no methods for deciding what is ethical. That is a matter for individuals, and for society a devil's chaplain, p.34, so now, can you see dear reader, how Dawkins is campaigning for the no rules fraternity, campaigning to enable pedophilia, to propagate sexual perversions as normal, and all of his pseudo-intellectual BS book writing is to that end? And his headquarters is CSICOP with Randy Shermer etc. Is it making sense now? Pause and read HTTP subversive thinking dot blogspot dot com slash two thousand nine slash zero one slash Prometheus dash books dash and dash pseudoskeptical dot html.